Hello, welcome to Accounting Yard YouTube channel. If you've been following the series of financial statements, we've done income statement, we've done statement of financial position, and here we're about to do your statement of cash flow. Now, as we all know, your cash flow can be prepared in two forms, a direct or indirect method. But the popular one among people is the indirect method, right? But the key difference between the two of them is what exactly is reflected within your operating activities. Now, for us to prepare a good cash flow, first thing we need to have is that we need to have our statement of financial position, current year, and the prior period we're interested in, right? And also have our income statement. Now, we prepare this based on the knowledge shared in our income statement and our balance sheet class, which you could also watch from our previous video. Now, the next thing now is that your cash flow, which is your movement in cash here, which basically what we've done is that we found the difference between our current year period and our prior year period to give us this figure here, which is the net movement in cash, which should be reflected on our cash flow, right? Now, if you look carefully, for assets, we've done prior period or current period minus prior period, or sorry, prior period minus current period, because indirectly in our cash flow, if an asset increases, it is a, it's a cash outflow. But if an asset reduces, it's a cash inflow. Now, we've done that for asset side like this, all the way for all the elements in assets, right? We did that all the way here. Then for liability, if there's an increase in liability, right? It means there's a cash inflow. If there's a reduction in liability, it means there's a cash outflow. We did that all the way. Same with equity. Now, if you look carefully, if I sum the data here, If I sum the data here, sum it with all these lines here, and I sum it all the way here, if I now take my cursor up, 173, if you look carefully, you see the figure here at the bottom here. It may not be very clear, but you see 173.050.221. Meaning that in real sense, when we are preparing our cash flow, what I actually explaining is the movement between the various balances in our financial statements in our cash flow. Now, the key thing for us is that first, you write down all the possible lines that could come out in your cash flow, right? This may not be all, depending on the nature of business, you may have more. So, for example, think tax payments should be included. And the first thing is, PBT, right? You can start from PBT, you can start from EBITDA, you can start from EBIT. But in this part class, you want to start from PBT. I pick my PBT figure, press enter, right? There. Now, finance cost is an adjustment. We will just adjust it, right? Minus, we go to our here. Depreciation, same. We adjust it. Amortization of intangibles. We we'll also adjust it. So directly, if you look at it, if you add all these numbers together, yeah, we we'll arrive at the number, <clears throat> or we can leave it that way and just continue. Now tax. Peculiarity about tax is that most times the best idea way to work around tax, tax, PPE, borrowings, is to have a movement schedule, right? And what exactly is a movement schedule? Tax, right? You have an opening balance, right? You have charge for the year, which is basically the income charge tax. Yeah? Then you have your payment, right? And you have your closing balance. Right. To make life easy for us, our opening balance, we can get it from what? Our prior year. So we look for income taxes. Yeah. Income tax liability. This is prior year. Right? Our closing balance is the current year. Pick it. Right? We also know that our charge for the year is the charge we have in our income statement, CF, income tax for the year. Let's turn it to positive. All right? 
Now we all know that indirectly, if I do my opening balance plus my charge for the year and minus my payment, it should give me this closing balance. But in this balance, you can see that it's giving 334. It means that if I do this minus my closing balance, bam, I get this figure. This is most likely the tax I've paid for the year. So I can easily copy this and paste special here. Bam. And that's my payment. So in my cash flow, all I need to do, to do now is go to the payment for taxes. It's a cash outflow. So I select what? My payment. Bam. I've done that, right? Let's see, for my payment, yeah. Working capital. This is usually very pretty straightforward. We know, I've said it already that an increase in assets is a cash outflow, while a decrease in assets is a cash inflow. I can easily go to my net movement and pick it because I've already done it in that order, right? So I can just do all my inventory. So I pick just inventory. Yeah? My receivable and trade receivables and other receivables. I can add all of them together, which is my trade receivable plus other receivable plus repayment. Right? Get that one. Take note in the formula here, I have written it that F2. You can see the blue minus the red. This is my opening balance less my. So it is an increase automatically is a negative. If there's a reduction, it's positive. Right? So I've done that. Now the next part is my payables. I've told you an increase in payable is a cash inflow and a decrease in payable is a cash outflow. What, what makes up my payables? One, two, and three. Don't forget I have done the movement in taxes of 16. All right, so I have my figure here. Now if I add my sum of all the figures here from the beginning all the way to the end, Right. Indirectly, what I'm saying now is that this is cash utilized, cash utilized equation. Bolding it, bolding this. PP, also a movement schedule, right? Simple movement schedule for the purpose of this class, just simplify it, right? We also have similar scenario. Yeah? Our charge will be depreciation in this particular case. And we have addition here. Mm -hmm. Opening balance prior year. Pick our prior year. PP prior year. Closing balance current year PP. Event. Your cash flow current year depreciation. <clears throat> I have right here. Don't forget a depreciation result in a reduction in net book value, right? So, automatically, we know that if we add this plus our depreciation, which is already negative, plus our addition, to give us our closing balance, which is this figure. Now, our closing balance should be 7718. We're seeing 886, meaning that what figure do I need to add here to bring it down to this place? All I need to now do is do this minus this 414. So that's my addition to PP. This is on the assumption that there's no disposal in the year, there's no revaluation of PP. Now, if there are revaluation or there's a disposal, it could also affect that balance. So we'll consider. We'll we don't want to make it too complex to make this class scenario simple enough, but in other scenarios, we'll make it deeper. So based on that, I can go to my cash flow. Within my PP, I can do cash outflow, because if I purchase assets, cash leaves me. Right? I've done my PP. Loan disbursement. Now in this particular scenario, if you look at it, right, you can see that loan balance we had here and loan balance there was no loan in prior year right so this is a little bit dicey so in a particular scenario 
it, might, it means that the business got a loan during the period. So first, also a simple movement schedule. E right. right? <clears throat> we have all this opening. There was no opening balance in the particular scenario. Disbursement, that means loan we got from the bank in the period. Repayment and our closing balance. There was no opening balance. There was disbursement. We've actually put how much was disbursed in the period to us here, right? Usually, if you understand the business, you would, and you've been following trends within the business, you would know how much loan was disbursed, right? Which you can get from information. The finance team will definitely have it, right? Someone within your finance team would have it. So you have how much loan was disbursed to you in the period or the contract between you and the bank. So I have that, right? I know my closing balance, which I'll get from my financials. Yeah, I have my closing balance. But we know that my disbursement, normally it should have been my opening, close the loans I receive in the period, less repayment should give me my closing balance. But we can see that that is not my closing balance. So I can easily do this figure less, oh, sorry, yeah. My closing balance less this figure will give me how much I should have paid back as low. Yeah, my repayment in period. Payment here in this sense is my principal repayment. <clears throat> this is my principal repayment. That's what I'm factoring here. So in my cash flow, there was no proceeds. I'm leaving it. Disbursement, we said disbursement here. I get my disbursement, right? The payments, it's the cash outflow. I just do my, yeah? Interest, now I'll just do the reverse of whatever I just did here. Yeah? Because the cash outflow, right? So let me quickly do this quickly. Sorry. Don't mind the way it's appearing there. All right? So indirectly, I've got some cash. Utilized investment. Holding this. Card generated. Awesome. Right? So I can add everything here. And I have all the figures here. So I can really do this, which is the font of this place. So, hmm? now the next thing is now I have my opening cash. Movement and cash. I have my closing cash. Format paint to this. Right, so I come here. What's my opening cash? My opening cash is already stated here. <clears throat> hmm? Movement in cash, actually, the sum of all these cash balance cash from financing, cash from utilized, and cash from, from investing and financing. 173045. Don't forget, 173050. If you come here, can you see? That tells us that we are correct. Right? So I need to just add the two of them together. I can now put a check whereby I compare this with my words closing cash. And it gives me zero. So it means my cash is fine. So this is a simple approach of just explaining cash. 
your cash flow in a simple way. I hope you've learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to Accounting Year YouTube channel. Do have a great day. Thank you.